we are vibrational beings. You know, we're not just flesh and blood. You know, uh, if you put anything under a microscope, an intense microscope, you're gonna ultimately see that everything is vibration. And, in, and as the scientists are not telling us, there's information there, but it's not solid, it's always moving. So we're vibrational beings. And when we lift our vibration to what we want to experience, it happens first on a vibratory level, and then it shows up and manifests in our life. So uh, people who are holding on to rancor, animosity, mm -hmm. they're slowing down their vibration. Okay. Another way of saying is you cannot have what you're not willing to become vibrationally. Ah. If you do get it, you'll lose it. Ah. You see, this is why people, they'll win the lottery, they, <laughs> they lose everything, yeah. or they'll finally get the person they think they Absolutely. want to be with. They can't keep, the, can't keep the relationship, or they'll get a modicum of success but can't hold on to it, because inside, they weren't vibrationally aligned. They really hadn't become it. So you can temporarily manipulate and get things, but to have it completely, you have to lift your vibration and, and become that in, in, in vibration. You're not really attracting things to you, you're really radiating. Ah, It's really a radiation. I could cry right now. It's like if I become the vibrational frequency of love, harmony, peace, and I'm radiating that. That's the key. It's gonna show up in my life. That's the key. Yeah. That's the word. You're not attracting it. You have to be it and radiate it, and then it, it comes, it is drawn to you. Right. And the, you to it. Yeah. You have to like yourself when you're by yourself. Yeah. You have to like yourself. I mean, when, you, when you're by yourself, you have to look at those thoughts, the beautiful thoughts, the crazy thoughts. Mm -hmm. You have to embrace yourself. You have to forgive yourself. You have to love yourself. And when you can fall in love with yourself and like yourself when you're by yourself, now you can be with others. But if you don't like yourself when you're by yourself, then you're pulling on others to make you happy. Is it possible to life vision when you're at the bottom? Not only is it possible, that's probably the best time to do it. When circumstances and situations are pressing in upon us, the only way we can overcome them is to go within, to actually begin to ask very empowering questions with the awareness that this universal presence and its law will answer any question that you ask. So if you're in a situation that uh, is pressing on you and you ask, what's trying to emerge in my life? What is my gift to share? Mm. What is my purpose? Why am I here on the planet? Not just how can I pay my rent, not just how can I stop the pain. You ask empowering questions, the universe will answer these questions in a language and in a way that you can understand. There'll be inner prompting, there'll be intuitive hits, nudges, signs, symbols, dreams. It'll come in the language of the, own, the, the individual soul and heart. The difficulty is that when people are in tough situations, they ask disempowering questions. Whoa. They say, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. Who's to blame? Yeah. Why, Why me? me? Yes. Those are the disempowering questions. So the universe will answer those too. It'll pull on the database of human experience and say, you were born on the wrong side of the tracks, or you were born on the right side of the tracks, or you, this happened or that happened. It'll give you a, a, a bevy of excuses. But if you ask an empowering question, you'll get an answer to rise above the muck. So it's all about the question, the sincerity of the question, and then the ability and the willingness to, to really listen, to really be available. That, that's where the juice is. And that is available to every human being. Whether an individual is in prison, whether an individual is imprisoned by circumstance, imprisoned in their own mind about an event that happened in their past, it doesn't matter. Once you ask with sincerity, the universe will answer. That's, that's the way it operates. You know, it goes back to asking the question. Yeah. And it, but it also goes back to understanding that the presence of God has never made a mistake, yeah. doesn't do do-overs, and doesn't repeat itself. Yeah. Therefore, each of us are unique expressions of the infinite. The way the infinite gets to express its infinite nature is through its uniqueness. Yeah. Therefore, I have a mandate to discover myself, yeah. find out who and what I am, what my purpose is, and to express it. And that, and that idea within us yeah. is infinite and is always unfolding. So it's not a one and done. It's not, I've arrived. Mm -hmm. It's, I'm always on a journey of unfolding. 
You grow where it's, you're planted. You grow where you're planted. And, and then you ask, what's trying to emerge? What's trying to unfold? And you'll start to get hints. You start to take baby steps walking in that direction. And as you take baby steps, inertia becomes momentum. Mm -hmm. And then possibilities start to reveal themselves. Potential starts to be activated. And, and you find yourself, as you look back, wow, I'm changed. I'm different. Yeah. When did that happen? You have to be in alignment with it. You have to have a level of practice. You have to give up your resistance to the circumstance. In other words, you're, it's, you're not arguing and resisting the circum with the circumstances. Yeah. I know this person said, I prayed. I did that. God hadn't <laughs> answered me yet. Yeah. This is the deal. God is always answering. <laughs> yes. But are we receiving? Are we listening? Are we available? Yes. So prayer, meditation, life visioning, it attunes us to become in alignment yeah. with that vibration. So we actually can hear it. We can actually feel it and then move in that direction. Many people, uh, if their prayers would be answered, they couldn't even receive it. They're not, they're not vibrationally ready. Victim consciousness is where many people live. Yeah. Somebody did it to me. The reason why I'm not happy is because you just make, you know, my ex-boyfriend, my boss. The world isn't fair. The world isn't fair. They're doing it to me. The reason why I'm not happy is somebody else's fault. Mm -hmm. God did it to me. The devil did it to me. My astrological sign did it to me. The numbers did my it to mother. me. My mother. My karma. Yeah. Okay. That's the victim stage. Every victim has a victim story. You ask somebody, a victim, what's going on, they'll give you a list of complaints about what's wrong and who did it. Fannie Lou Hamer once said, I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, something happens and you start to open up to a possibility that maybe, maybe I'm in my own way. Maybe there's something more than, than what meets the eye. You're gonna need something that is not within your little mind and your little perception. And that's where prayer comes in. That's where meditation comes in. That's where life visioning comes in. So if you just said, help, I'm open. I'm available to something new. Now you're on your way. Yeah. Help is a prayer. Help, help is a prayer. <laughs> yeah. I, I say, when I use the word help, I say, hello, eternal, loving presence. That's what help means to me. Yeah. Hello, eternal, eternal loving. loving presence. Wow, that's a good one. Back in the day when the Bodhi tree existed and a book fell off the shelf. Just, I walked in and the book just slammed on the floor off the shelf. And it was exactly what I needed to read at that time. And so I learned about manifestation. I learned about the second stage which is how to manifest, which is establishing intention, beginning to see visually the kind of life you want to uh, live, beginning to have conversation about that kind of life. I tell people you have to talk about it more than you talk about your problems, because at the end of the day, if you're complaining more than you're talking about your vision, yeah. then you're in inertia. So this is a shift that takes place where you're actually talking about the possibilities mm -hmm. more than you're talking about your issues. Yeah. You don't deny the issues. Bad things have happened to people. You're not denying that those things have happened. But it's the energy that you give to it. That yes. is a definite true fact. If you start talking about somebody or you're engaged in a conversation where you're gossiping, before long, you're spiraling down. Energy goes into those lower frequencies. Yep. Doubt, worry, fear. All, and now you're in, you're in that sediment, mm -hmm. you're in that dynamic. Mm -hmm. But if you start talking about possibility, even, even if you don't know how to get there, then your energy starts to go up. Mm -hmm. You know, what if, you ask a what if question. You know, what if, what if all my needs were met? What would I be doing in my life? What if everything is really working together for my good? What if all the bad things that have happened in my life are leading me to activating some great potential in my, in my experience. Mm -hmm. What if God really is on my side? Yeah. You know, you ask a what if question and you start to notice little tiny miracles happening in your life. Mm -hmm. Things start to manifest. You don't know how they got there. The, the primary dark night of the soul is when you're losing your identification yeah. with your previous identity, but you don't yet have an identification with what's new emerging. You're mm -hmm. in That's good. the dark. That's good. You don't know. Uh, you, you, you knew this is who you used to be, yeah. but you're not that anymore. But who you're becoming, you're not that either. So it's dark. 
It's really, and sometimes it's excruciating. Sometimes it's a lot of fear, a lot of disconnect. And I, I, I tell people that when you're going through that, mm -hmm. tell them to ask this question. If this experience were to last forever, yeah. what quality would have to emerge for me to have peace of mind? Ooh. So if you ask that question, and you say, oh, if, I, if, I, if, I, is this, if this particular experience was, was gonna last forever, I would need, I would need some strength. I would need some, some peace. I would need a little bit more, you know, name whatever quality. And what happens is, when your attention starts focusing on that quality, rather than resisting the dark night, then the process is speeded up. And your identification- You move through it you faster. You move it, through it faster. Yeah. Pain pushes until the vision pulls. So life is progressive and it's pushing you yeah. until you get pulled by a larger vision. So once you have a vision that you can articulate. Okay, so pain pushes you. So it get, it's hard, it's harder, it's harder, it's harder, and it's trying to force you into having a vision, a vision yes. that's bigger than, than, than the, the pain. pain. And that's a principle. Potential is always bigger than the problem. Potential is always bigger than the problem. Your potential is infinite and is always bigger than whatever problem you're going through. You begin to have a, a, a vision about the possibility. Mm -hmm. You start to be pulled by it, and then once you really sincerely embrace it yeah. and your life begins to be, okay, when I wake up this morning, I'm gonna walk in the direction of my purpose. I'm gonna walk in the direction of my vision. I'm gonna walk in the direction of that possibility and the potential yes. instead of allowing myself to go, oh, woe is me, or I can't believe, or that. Right. I'm gonna walk in the... The yeah. cosmic two by four doesn't need to hit you as much. Wow. You're pulled. You're being pulled more by joy and it's like, I'm being pulled by some, something. Now, it doesn't mean you're not gonna have challenges. Of course, of course. We don't, we don't, we're not praying to live a challenge-free life. We're praying that the challenges that come activate latent potential. Understanding that pain pushes until vision pulls. Ask what if questions. Yes. Begin to see, visualize the kind of life you want to live. Mm -hmm. Begin to talk about it. Begin to write it down. Begin to dream about it. And then what I, what I teach is, you talk about it. it. Doesn't mean you talk to everybody because everyone is not trustworthy. That's right. You talk to selected friends. About it. About it. You talk to it. Uh -huh. You actually talk to the vision. Talk to the possibility. Talk to love. You talk to peace. You talk to prosperity. I see you everywhere. I see you prosperity in the lawn. I see you abundance on the, in the grain of the sand. I see you everywhere. Mm -hmm. You talk to it. And then after a while, you're talking from it. Mm -hmm.